Southern Kentucky family has more questions than answers. How? How did this happen? They're just taking way too soon. How they're remembering four people, including a toddler, killed in a crash. Mom called me and was like, the house got on fire. A Sky County family now needs a new home for Christmas. And firefighters in Lincoln County make a run. I'll fall back behind us. You need to you need us. But this time, it wasn't for an emergency. How they are helping families in need. This is WKYT News at 11. They are remembering their family killed in a crash. You're watching WKYT. I'm Kristen Kennedy. A Southern Kentucky family is mourning the loss of four loved ones killed in a crash Friday. The wreck happened on the Hal Rogers Parkway near mile marker 23 in Clay County. State police say a truck crossed the center line and hit a car head on. We're told the driver of the car, Judy Pennington Adams, her daughter Tiffany Williams and a family friend, Charlene Lewis, died at the scene. Williams' son, Kyson, died Saturday at UK Hospital. We're told she was also eight months pregnant. The unborn baby did not survive. WKYT's Hillary Thornton is talking to family. It's our top story at 11. He told me that he had some. Friday night, Cassidy Nance thought she was getting her annual happy birthday phone call from her family here in Kentucky. Instead, it was her uncle with the heartbreaking news. Here, Cassie, Granny Judy, and Tiffany were involved in a car accident tonight, and um, they were killed in it. Nance's grandmother, Judy Pennington Adams, and cousin Tiffany Williams, along with Williams' unborn child, due in about a month. Her young son, Kyson, and longtime family friend, Charlene Lewis, all killed in this crash on the Hal Rogers Parkway in Clay County. How, how did this happen? They're just taking way too soon. State police say Jason Gibson, who is listed in fair condition at UK Hospital, crossed the center line, hitting Nance's loved ones head on. Investigators do believe alcohol and drug use played a role. And then we found out that that was possibly a factor. It just made everything like 10 times worse. Nance says the word happy best describes her grandmother, someone she says was always there for others. She was just always the person that you'd go to and have to like lay your head on her shoulders. Meanwhile, she is remembering her cousin Tiffany as an incredible mother and little Kyson for his contagious smile. Whenever I got a FaceTime on before, he was just the happiest little baby that I have ever met. Now in this difficult time, Nance says they are remembering the happy times, which she says many surround this particular time of year. We always have the best Christmases with Granny and Tiffany and everybody. A family that was hoping to make more of those memories this Christmas. I was actually going to go up the 26th after Christmas and go and see them. They're probably going to meet little Kyson and no, I can't. In Clay County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Family members are still finalizing funeral arrangements. We are learning new information tonight about the young men killed in a crash in Nelson County. Firefighters say the car the men were in crossed the center line on Kentucky 31 East and hit a pickup truck head on. The coroner says 25 year old Tyler Foster, 24 year old Jordan Hickman, and 24 year old Keaton Hall died in the crash. We're told Hall just graduated from UK. Firefighters say one of the men was ejected from the car. When we arrived, we had the one vehicle that had one of the deceased in it still. It had a young man in the back seat that he went over to tend to, and I went to the pickup truck to tend to the gentleman that was uh, in the uh, pickup truck entrapped. The driver of the truck went to a hospital with serious leg injuries. Police believe speed played a role in that crash. Deputies say it is one of the worst shootings they've ever seen. They are now investigating a deadly double shooting in Laurel County. Last night around 930, Laurel County deputies went out to a home on Nature's Bend Road about nine miles east of London. They say 29-year-old Michael Allen, his girlfriend, 26-year-old Ashley Beckner, and their three-year-old daughter were visiting Allen's father when the couple got into an argument. We're told Allen shot Beckner and then shot at his father. His father, deputies say, then shot him. We deal with a lot of domestic violence issues here, but this is one of the most tragic that we've investigated recently. The couple's daughter was not hurt. Deputies are not sure what led up to the argument. 
Right now, Allen's father is not facing any charges. Deputies believe he shot Allen in self-defense. A Scott County family will have to find a new home for Christmas. Firefighters tried to save their trailer on Mulholland Drive early this morning, but they say it's too damaged for the family living inside to stay. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner is in Georgetown talking with family. Mom called me and was like, the house got on fire. A Georgetown family is homeless for the holidays after their home went up in flames. They didn't have much time to make it out. Scott County firefighters arrived to a fully engulfed trailer fire and they're ruling the home a total loss. Officials tell us there weren't working smoke detectors in the home where Samantha Bailey and her boyfriend were sleeping. Bailey's boyfriend smelled smoke and then saw a small fire in the kitchen, but small doesn't describe the outcome of the blaze. I mean, she was kind of in a daze, like when I seen her this morning, and she she woke up. I mean, they was kind of shocked. I mean, I don't think it, they they can't believe what happened to them. Friends of the residents of this home were on scene. They tell us the family was asleep at the time of the fire. Luckily, they had noticed it ignite. But they were only able to get out with their important paperwork. They've lost everything else. Clothes, Christmas presents, they are all in this pile of rubble now. All the presents, everything the mom got us was in the house, but it got burned up. And she feels bad about it and where we couldn't have a Christmas without all the gifts and all that. And Mom's feeling sad about it, and I just told her, don't worry about it. Normally, more people would have been sleeping in the home. Austin and Tyler Turley happened to be at their father's house in Lexington. Firefighters say that's the silver lining, that everyone is okay. In Scott County, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. We have information on how to help the family on our website, WKYT.com. We are getting ready to experience a week of warm, wet weather. We're tracking a warm up into the holiday week. WKYT's Mike Linden is tracking our Christmas forecast. This is just the start of it, Kristen. Temperatures are still quite mild even into the evening hours, and they are bound to get even warmer as we get closer to the holiday on Friday. Right now, most spots still sitting in the mid 40s. Some spots, even like in Jefferson County, up near 50 degrees as we get our evening going. And that is going to continue to be the case here as temperatures continue to trend warmer. The skies are pretty overcast right now, and that means that we will hold on to that warmth as we head into Monday morning. And speaking of what we'll also see on Monday, looks like quite a bit of rain, or at least the beginning of it. Things are going to really get going a little bit more as we head into the coming days here. But with warmer temperatures as well as the moisture, we can rule out a white Christmas. It looks like we won't be cold enough for the development of snowfall here moving into the second half of our work week. But coming up, I'll break down what you can expect through the upcoming work week. Of course, tomorrow at 1150 at night is the official beginning of the winter season, and it doesn't look like it's going to feel nor look very much like winter. Kristen? Thank you, Mike. What a difference a year makes. The UK women's basketball team welcomed Duke to town tonight, hoping to avenge last year's loss. The Cats jumped out to an early lead and never looked back. Lee K. Howard joins us now with highlights. Hey, Lee K. Hey there, Kristen. Kentucky's women's team had just one win against Duke all time in program history. That win came back in 2011. The Wildcats looking to change that tonight in Lexington. Wildcats also looking to improve the 10 0 for just the fourth time in program history. The Juco transfer, Evelyn Akator, scored eight of Kentucky's first 10 points to give UK the early lead with. 18 she finished the game. Michaela Epps held without a field goal in the first half. She would heat up in the second half. Epps for three from the corner. Her dad likes it. Epps had 11 points in the second half alone. None better than this one. On the break, draws contact plus the bucket. And look at this. That'll get a smile out of Matthew Mitchell. Epps finishes with 17 points. The Wildcats improved to 10 and 0 with the 71 to 61 win. A big win for the Wildcats. Much more highlights, and we will hear from a very happy Coach Mitchell coming up a little bit later in sports. Some Central Kentucky firefighters made a much different kind of run today. Crews in Lincoln County rushed to homes to deliver presents. WKYT's Phil Pendleton rode with firefighters passing out toys. His story is new at 11. 
Firefighters are used to rushing to someone's house. But usually it's because of a tragedy or to try to stop one. But today... Santa's riding along with us in the fire truck to, to deliver these gifts. It was not an emergency run for firefighters. Basically, we had got a request that some kids were need for Christmas. So we've got about 10 families that we're going to deliver to today. Three fire trucks fanned out and drove all over the county. Some of the families, some of the parents have lost their jobs. The sight of Santa was merely enough for smiles to warm up a cold Sunday afternoon. I I'm not for sure how many presents each kid will get, but they're getting several. Donations paid for all the gifts, and volunteer firefighters received a much different reaction today than when they respond to a burning home or a tragedy. Just something that we enjoy doing to make sure that these kids get to Christmas. In Lincoln County, Frosty. Phil Pendleton, WKYT. The deputy chief says the children they delivered gifts to this year would not have had presents if not for the firefighters' toy drive. Tomorrow, Harlan Gowney will honor one of their own for winning this season of the hit show The Voice. Jordan Smith returned home Friday night, and his community will throw him a homecoming parade at 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. We will be there, and we'll have the latest on the celebration starting on WKYT News at 4. Now to a breaking news alert. We are tracking out of Las Vegas. Police say a driver ran into pedestrians on the Las Vegas Strip and injured 11 people. That crash happened near the Paris Hotel and Casino. We have a live picture of that scene up right now for you. A spokeswoman for University Medical Center in Las Vegas says the crash victims came to their trauma center. No word on their conditions. Investigators say the driver is undergoing a field sobriety test. Be sure to check WKYT.com and the WKYT News app for updates on that story. Presidential candidates aren't taking a Christmas vacation just yet. Many held events today and appeared on Sunday morning political shows. They are following up on last night's last debate of the year. CBS News correspondent Wendy Gillette reports from New York. I will fight her. Several Republican candidates for president fired back Sunday, disputing comments Hillary Clinton made during Saturday night's Democratic debate, including her position on Syria. We now finally are where we need to be. We have a strategy and a commitment to go after ISIS. Republican Carly Fiorina says that's not the case. She's gotten every single foreign policy challenge wrong. And no, Mrs. Clinton, we are not where we need to be in the fight against ISIS. Somebody like a Trump comes along and says, I know the answers. All of the Democratic candidates heavily criticized Republican frontrunner Donald Trump during the final debate of 2015, especially his plan to stop Muslims from entering the U.S. He is becoming ISIS's best recruiter. They are going to people showing videos of Donald Trump insulting Islam and Muslims in order to recruit more radical jihadists. Trump responded Sunday morning by phone. It's nonsense. It's just another Hillary lie. She lies like crazy about everything. Trump's comments on Muslims have not hurt his campaign. The latest CBS analysis shows he's still way out in front in New Hampshire and North Carolina. That's what I tell everyone. But it also shows Ted Cruz has taken the lead in Iowa, the first state to weigh in on the presidential campaign on February 1st. Wendy Gillette for CBS News. The next debate will be a Republican one, January 14th. Former President Jimmy Carter has lost his grandson. Carter broke the news to his church in Plains, Georgia today. Carter told the congregation his 28-year-old grandson, Jeremy Carter, wasn't feeling well yesterday. Carter says his grandson took a nap and his heart stopped while he was sleeping. A parent-teacher organization at a Knott County Elementary School gave a Christmas gift to every student this weekend. The PTO at Beaver Creek Elementary gave every student and their family a full Christmas meal. They sent each child home with turkey, mashed potatoes, corn, rolls, and dessert. Every little bit helps, and if we can take some of that financial burden off of some of the families that's already impacted so much, we've made a difference. The PTO held a festival fundraiser and several other events to pay for the meals.
A Christmas light display in Lexington is shining for a good cause. The Whistlework nonprofit organization has put together Let There Be Light at the Robert H. Williams Cultural Center on Georgetown Street. People can drive in to see the light display. Admission is free, but organizers ask you bring canned food for God's Pantry and the Hope Center. They say it takes a community to put the event together. Now, the West End is an area that has historically just been uh, problem solving in their nature and very giving to social causes. And so it's a wonderful opportunity to have our young people and our families continue that tradition. Let There Be Light will continue tomorrow and Tuesday night from 7 to 9.30.